How y'all doing? I'm Brandon Mom with Voodoo Forge and I'm gonna shoot a little video today on how to make a cold chisel from scrap cool spring. Now when you're using scrap you never know exactly what kind of steel that you're using but uh, most of it is 5160 so I'm, I'm gonna work uh, with it like that um, but you, you never know for sure so keep that in mind whenever you're using scrap. Um, now there's two ways to, to finish a uh, cold chisel when you're forging one and I'm going to show you both uh, and the tools to do both. So I'm going to show you how to do it completely by hand with no power tools and I'm going to show you how to do it with power tools to, to do your finished polishing and, and shaping and everything. So that's what's coming up. Uh, let's get started. Okay, here's almost everything we need to complete this project. Right here is a piece of 5 8 spring stock. It's off of a front wheel drive car. I have no idea what kind of car it came off of. Uh, this is a kilogram and a half cross peen hammer. It's uh, close to three and a half pounds, kilogram and a half. Don't quote me on that. This is a smaller rounding hammer. I'll be using both those hammers. It can be done with one hammer. I just, it, I use two. Uh, right here, this is face shield. We'll be using uh, an angle grinder. You don't have to use an angle grinder to complete this project, but I will be using an angle grinder. Anytime you use an angle grinder, make sure you use proper safety equipment, which face shield and hearing protection. Right here, this is 5 8 bolt tongs. This will be what we use to hold our stock while we're forging it. And then here I have a mill bastard file and emery cloth. I'll be showing you how to complete this project with both hand tools and power tools. Hand tools, this is what you'll need. It's a, a basically a metal cutting file and emery cloth. Emery cloth holds up better than sandpaper. Essentially it's sandpaper with a cloth backing. Uh, it, it's just a little sturdier when you're working blacksmith projects. So I highly recommend you get some emery cloth and just keep it in your, your basic kit anyway. Uh, in the back there, I've got an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. That's what I'll be using to cut the um, stock we're using off the parent stock. You don't have to use that. You can use a hacksaw. You can use anything you can cut metal with. You can use a hot cut and your forge, but I'll be using an angle grinder. I find it to be easier. Uh, I have seen people cut spring steel with a uh, metal cut and chop saw things like that and to be honest that, that just seems ridiculously dangerous so um, that's why i use an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel i also have a pair of gloves here i don't wear gloves a lot when i'm blacksmithing to be honest uh, i wear them when i'm welding and i wear them when i'm quenching something in oil because it flames up real big and i don't want to cook my hand uh, right here i've got a angle grinder with a flat disc on it I'm going to be showing you how to finish it with power tools, and this is the main power tool we're going to be using uh, to finish it. So that's most everything you need. We'll also be using a, a, a bench top belt sander and, uh, of course, hearing protection, a forge, and an anvil. Okay, I've got uh, face shield on. I've got hearing protection on. I'm marking this where I want to cut it. Got it locked in a vise securely. Now I'm just going to zip through it. Okay, there's the material we're using. And put a flexible tape on here. Should be about eight inches in length once we straighten her out. Okay, I just lit the forge so it's not super high yet, but it will be. So we're gonna go ahead and stick our stock in. Okay, first order of business is to get this joker straight. Uh, basically, Fairly explanatory. So explanatory. 
Okay, now at this point, this material is straight. Uh, you, you get several different schools of thought on this. Um, a lot of people will want to hammer it into octagonal stock, um, make sure it's perfectly round. I'm just making a cold chisel real quick, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave most of it rough. Uh, if that's what you do, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Go ahead, do that. Um, I'm not going to this time. So I'm going to move on into shaping the chisel point. time to cool and this is what we've got right now now what we're gonna do with this is this end right here is quite nasty and needs to be cleaned up this end right here is quite nasty and needs to be cleaned up so we're gonna do some of this with a file and some of it with power tools Probably more with power tools, but you'll get the idea. All right, moving forward. Okay, so what we're gonna do with the struck end of the chisel is we need to basically turn it into a little a little dome uh, that you hit. Um, now, the, the cheapest way to do this is with a file. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna start with that. I'm gonna show you basically how that works. Lock it in a vice good and Good, lock it in the vice, good. And start filing. Don't pull back on your file. Now see, this is taking everything off nice and smooth, getting it to where we can put that dome on it uh, so we can hit it and, and the, the blow will be distributed. Um, and you can, you can do it this way, no problem. Uh, especially, you know, we air cooled it so it's it's fairly soft. But um, there's a quicker way. Let me show you that. Okay, now got an angle grinder. Got a 60 grit flap disc on it. Got my face shield on. Got my hearing protection on. Got a pair of gloves on. And um, I'm going to dome this just like we were doing with the file. 
it might be a little quicker. Now something I just want to point out real quick, I don't have the safety shield on this angle grinder. I have a few angle grinders that I use that way. I don't recommend it. It's what I do. It's not even necessarily smart. Uh, so don't do that. So I'm not recommending that. Keep all your safety equipment on your tools. All right, I'm gonna dome this thing real quick. All right, that was uh, much quicker. A little, little sparkier, but much quicker. All right, now we've got this end to contend with. Now what we need to do here is cut this end off flat. Uh, we can uh, file it down. We can use an angle grinder. You could use a hacksaw. You could use whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm gonna use an angle grinder, but you just need to get that flat. Okay, now we've got this flat on top now. So you're getting the the shape of a chisel but it's got to be sharpened. Now, uh, once again, this can be done either uh, with a file, with an angle grinder, uh, or a belt sander. I prefer to use a belt sander. And so we're gonna go over there real quick uh, and, uh, and get it sharp. Okay, this is not a high-end belt sander. This is a, a Harbor Freight Special. I'm not a bladesmith, so I don't I don't really need a, a super nice belt sander. I might build one or, or get one later, but right now this is what I use. Um, and it works fine for the task I use it for. Like I said, I'm not a bladesmith, so I don't have to have a super nice one. But uh, here we go. Okay, now, when I was uh, sanding this, I discovered it's got, I don't know if you can see it, uh, this has a, a small crack in the end of it. So that's, that's not gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this back to the forge, I'm gonna forge it down again, and then come back to this step. And, uh, and we'll move on from there. But you basically, if you get to this point and there's a crack in the end of it, do not harden it, do not temper it, do not test it if it's got a crack and you try to use it, you're gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna break and that, that could be bad. So uh, I'll get, you have to go back to the beginning and come back to this point. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, uh, I took it back to the forge. I reforged the tip and took it back to the uh, belt sander and uh, redid my bevel on the end, got it uh, where I want it, 
and also I kind of polished it. I, I should have probably filmed that, but I polished it, which the polishing is important because next we're going to harden it and then we'll temper it and it has to be polished for the tempering aspect of that. So the next step is to heat this to non-magnetic and that's exactly what it sounds like. You heat this until it, it's no longer magnetic and if you look at it in a dark spot it'll actually be, uh, the color will be um, pulsating and that's the steel molecules moving around in there. Uh, there's a science to it, but the basic point is it's it's no longer magnetic So when the magnet won't stick to it, it is hot enough, and then we're going to harden it. We're going to harden it by dipping it in oil and um, Then we'll come back and temper it after it's hardened Okay Pretty sure it's a non-magnetic. Here's our magnet And it's not sticking so it's ready to harden you wear gloves when you do this straight in all the way around use the oil now if you pull it out now it's going to flash there's going to be more fire very exciting but what you've done is where you've cooled it taken it from the non-magnetic inside just kind of cinch up so it's very brittle it's very hard but it's very brittle so it sounds below critical now so I can set it right there our chisel is uh, cool enough we can touch I took it and uh, wire brushed the oil off of it it will be going back into the oil uh, but this is where our emery cloth comes out we've got to get this shiny right here because when we're tempering it we need to be able to watch the colors run now what tempering is is tempering is we will be heating it from the back and we'll be doing that to soften parts of the chisel uh, what we want is we want this to be nice and soft and get gradually harder down to here. Since we're going to use this to cut steel with, we're going to we're going to do this by the colors, and uh, and so we're going to have a straw color on the tip. Once that straw color gets to the tip, we're going to stop the the reaction of the heat by quenching it in oil again and swishing it around. And we're going to heat it by putting the struck end into the forge. Okay, I put the struck end of the chisel into the forge um, and I'm heating it. Now what I'm doing is where we made the entire thing brittle when we hardened it, I'm softening it, cleaning it. I am softening it from the back forward uh, and we're going to watch the, the colors run on this. It's a, it's a traditional way of uh, tempering a, a tool like this and the colors will tell us the hardness. Now we're going to use this chisel to cut steel so we want it pretty hard on the end so we're going to run it to a straw color. Okay I'm not sure how well you can uh, see the colors but they've run. I've got uh, straw on the end, bronze, purple and then blue so what I want to do now is stop it from softening so once again got to quench and oil okay so we've we've got it now uh, it's uh, hardened and tempered so it's very hard down here it should be hard enough to cut steel and it's soft enough back here that you can beat on it without it shattering there's only one way to know for sure and that is to cut steel with it so I'm going to take a piece of quarter inch round put on the uh, cut plate here and cut it or attempt to anyway Let's see we're going through It's cutting it.
Alright. As you can see, it's cutting through there. No problem. Uh, the only problem is there's a camera tripod in my way and I can't hold it. And no damage to the end of the chisel so it is hardened and tempered properly. Okay, well that's it. That's a uh, quick and dirty how to uh, make a cold chisel out of scrap uh, cool spring. Uh, it's definitely not top quality, but it, it's a tool and it will get you through. I wouldn't sell it, but I would use it and have used them like that many times to cut stock or uh, it's any part of a job where you have to cut steel or stone or whatever. But uh, it can be done a lot nicer. You can take the shaft to full octagon. You can round it. You can get those pits that were in there out of it. There's lots of ways that it can be done different. This is just one way. This is just a quick and dirty, you got a cold chisel. Um, but anyway, I hope you all enjoyed it. hope you learned something. And if you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And uh, we'll hope to have some more stuff like this coming y'all's way. We'll see y'all later.